Battle of San Patricio was a battle fought on February 27, 1836, and would be the first battle of the Goliad Campaign. After the Siege of Bayar had ended and all Mexican troops had left Texas, many Texians believed that the war was over. The Texian army now had control over Texas and would have it that way for two months. In Mexico, Santa Ana, upon hearing of his brother-in-law's defeat at San Antonio, had temporarily relinquished his presidency, but retained his role as Generalissimo. He was determined to crush the rebellion in Texas and would begin assembling a large force to restore order. By the end of 1835, his army numbered at about 6,000 soldiers. In late December, he would order the Mexican Congress to pass the Tornell Decree, declaring that any foreigners fighting against Mexican troops will be deemed as pirates and dealt with as such. The resolutions thus gave the Mexican army permission to take no prisoners. Santa Ana personally led the bulk of his troops inland to San Antonio de Bayar and would personally begin the siege of the Alamo on February 23, 1836. General José de Herrera would also lead 550 troops towards Goliad to recapture the Texas Gulf Coast, which became known as the Goliad Campaign. In late 1835, many Texians thought that a quick invasion of the Mexican port town of Montemoros might draw aid from Mexican Federalists in the Mexican interior. However, Sam Houston, Stephen F. Austin, Governor Henry Smith, and Goliad commander Philip Dimmitt, who probably had given birth to the idea of the invasion, now opposed the idea of an expedition. Nevertheless, Dr. James Grant and Colonel Franklin W. Johnson went on with the plans to organize the expedition, now known as the Montemoros Expedition. After raiding supply warehouses in San Antonio, Grant moved to Goliad and took horses and other supplies from Dimmitt's command. Houston spoke to assembled troops in Refugio and convinced some of the men under Johnson and Grant that the expedition was not worth it, and many of the men left the army while others joined the troops stationed at Presidio La Bahia in Goliad under the command of James W. Fannion. By the end of January 1836, only 70 men remained with Johnson and Grant, who were mostly American and European volunteers who had arrived in Texas after the Texas Revolution had begun. Despite hearing rumors that the Mexican army was approaching, Grant and Johnson chose to take their men south on an oasis river into territory belonging to the state of Tamaulipas to search for horses to buy, sell, or otherwise gather. On February 21st, Johnson and part of his group began driving 100 horses back into Texas. The rest of the men remained with Grant, ideally to look for more horses but in actuality, he was attempting to meet with his allies near Montemoros to determine whether Federalists were still willing to rise up against the Mexican army. Johnson's men arrived on February 24th in San Patricio, an Irish settlement 100 miles north of Montemoros, but unbeknownst to Johnson, most of the San Patricio residents were centralists, loyal to the Mexican government. Johnson sent 12 men to guard the horses at the ranch of Huila de la Graza, approximately four miles outside of the town, while the rest were garrisoned in San Patricio. The men divided up into four groups. Eight men camped on the public square, while the rest camped in three different houses. Confident that Grant would alert him if Mexican troops were in the area, Johnson chose not to appoint sentries, instead allowing all of his men to take shelter. Through a network of spies, Urrea had kept track of Johnson and Grant's forces and would cross into Texas on February 18, 1836. Upon learning that Johnson was camped at San Patricio, he put his men through a forced march during a bitterly cold and wet night. Urrea instructed three officers to go to San Patricio dressed as civilians and warn the Centralists that the Mexican army was approaching. In an effort to reduce casualties and property damage, centralists were asked to declare their loyalties by leaving lanterns burning in their windows. Locals also gave the officers precious information on which buildings housed the Texian soldiers. Urrea sent 30 men under Captain Rafael Pratilia to De La Graza's ranch to surprise the Texians camped there, and Urrea would arrive at San Patricio at 3 a.m. on February 27th. 
When Pertilia arrived at the ranch, he found that all the Texian sentries had fallen asleep. Pertilia's soldiers opened fire on the sleeping men, injuring two Texians, and in the subsequent fight, four Texans died, eight men were taken prisoner, and several escaped. Back in San Patricio, the small Texian force who had been sound asleep was caught off guard when Arreya's men attacked. Captain Thomas K. Pearson fired his musket at the Mexican soldiers and ordered his men to do the same. During the firefight, they would kill a Mexican officer and wound two other soldiers. Determined to prevent more casualties, Mexican dragoons set the thatch roof of the hut on fire and the Texans surrendered. As the Texians stepped outside of their hut, the Mexican troops cut them down with musket bullets and lances, killing seven Texans. A few other Texans in another hut managed to surrender when they found themselves surrounded by Mexican troops. While the battle was raging on, Johnson and three others sneaked out of the back of their hut and escaped to Refugio, where they sent a messenger to James W. Fannion at Goliath, 75 miles north, to let him know that Herrera's army was close. Around 16 Texans were killed in the fighting, and 21 were captured, and the Mexican troops suffered one killed and four wounded. After the battle had ended, Urrea waited for reinforcements before beginning his march towards Goliad, and his advance party searched for Grant and the remaining Texians. After learning of Grant's whereabouts from local spies, on March 2nd, the Mexican army ambushed the Texians at Aguadulce Creek. <laughs> 